About three years ago, somebody decided to combine walking with football. Walking football is one of the fastest growing sports in the UK, with over 800 teams registered on the Walking Football United website. The aim? Well, that was to inspire the over 50s to get out of their armchairs and back into exercise. The idea? That was to have a slower, gentler version of the beautiful game. However, there's a problem. Serious injuries caused by physical contact and the aggressive nature of some teams and players is putting a lot of people off the idea. Here's Mike's story. It was the first few seconds of the match and I was playing in a defensive position when one of our forward players passed the ball to me. I turned to my right to play a pass forward when in the corner of my eye I saw one of the opposition players approaching very quickly from my left. I was just making the pass when I saw a foot wrap around my leg and there was a heavy collision. I heard a crack in my leg, an instant pain, and I knew straight away it was a serious injury. This happened to Mike at the national finals last year. Mike describes it as the worst sports injury he's ever had. He won't be able to play for six months, and to be honest, he's not sure about playing walking football in the future. This is not an isolated incident. Take a look. Twenty percent of falls cause serious injuries such as broken bones or head injuries. Ninety-five percent of hip fractures are caused by a player falling, normally falling sideways. In the incidents we've just seen, nine of them included physical contact. Seven of those resulted in a player falling to the ground. With players in their sixties and seventies, well, you can understand why some of them are being put off. The new initiative to combat the problem is non-contact walking football. Steve Rich at Walking Football United and the newly proclaimed uh, Walking Football Association is introducing non-contact walking football into all competitions. I'm in Rochdale where they've been playing non-contact football for quite some time. The sessions are run jointly by Rochdale AFC Community Trust and Link for Life. I'm at the Rochdale Leisure Centre to interview Paul Gardner, the Link for Life coordinator, to find out more. How did the non-contact game come about? Um, I've been involved with walking football for about three years now. Um, we started sessions here at uh, Rochdale Leisure Centre. Uh, um, and over that three year period, walking football has developed from just maybe a handful of clubs in the country now to about a thousand clubs registered. It's one of the fastest growing uh, sports in the country. And I've seen the game get more and more competitive as that's gone on. Uh, and what we did as a club, we said minimal contact was uh, our rule. Right. Uh, and we found that even with minimal contact, even in training sessions and at tournaments, it was still getting to a, a, a stage where it was a bit unsafe to play. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How well did the players adapt to non-contact? Um, they got to um, a stage where, when a new player comes in, what we've introduced is uh, like a code of conduct. Oh. Yeah. And within that code of conduct, we've now moved on to non-contact. And we feel that for the safety of the players, which is predominantly players that are 60 plus, even a guy who's 80, wow. yeah, the non-contact rule, yeah, took a while, yeah, to get going, but it has now been fully accepted. And referee, whoever referees the game, uh, we we understand that there's going to be a small amount of contact, but as long as it's accidental and not over physical, right? Yeah, we'll allow play to go on. That leads me to the next question. There are people who would say you need an element of physical contact, or a game loses its identity. What do you think about that? I think it's that definition of what. The physical contact is in the game, yeah. Right. 
uh, as, I've, as I've explained, it's for the referee to make that decision. Yeah, and if in a tackle situation you take the ball, yeah, and there's 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 some accidental contact, I think the game can keep flowing. It's when it becomes more cynical, where there's tackling from behind, where there's a lot of physicality used, especially on older players. I have to look at the safety for them. So, what are the rules for non-contact walking football? I'm here with Dave Brooks at Rochdale FC, who came up with the idea for non-contact. Um, what are the rules, Dave? Well, as far as non-contact goes, the rules are very simple. There's only one rule. Um, as two players come into contact with each other, the referee blows his whistle. Okay. He then decides who's at fault. If he can't decide who's at fault, he restarts the game with a drop ball. It's that simple. Do the players grasp it quickly? or? They do. They've got to adjust mentally, but once they understand that there's no tackling from behind, there's no shoulder charging, there's no pushing, um, it's a lot safer for all the players. What if it's an accident? Well, I'm not saying players don't come into contact with each other. Of course they do. But with the rule in place, as soon as they do, the referee blows his whistle so things don't escalate. Because sometimes a little nudge leads to a bigger nudge, leads to a push and someone falling over. With this rule, that doesn't happen. OK, well, thanks for that, Dave. Dave's now going to talk us through the basics of the principles of non-contact walking football, and we're going to do that on another pitch. Let's find out how this works in practice. Dave is going to walk us through the basics. We're going to look at three scenarios. The first one is where the forward receives a ball marked closely by a defender. As a ball comes in and I shield the ball, there's no way the defender can get the ball without making contact. If I move to the left, he follows to block me off. If I move to the right, he does the same. All the defender is trying to do is make me pass the ball. So let's look at that situation in a real live game. Defending in non-contact walking football, it's all about jockeying the forward, making him pass the ball. That's what happens here. The forward in red holds the ball up well, the defender tracks his movement and forces the forward away from the goal. Similar situation here, but the forward this time is in red, is side on to the defender. You'll notice as the forward carries the ball, the defender blocks his route, so the forward shields the ball, he has nowhere to go, passes it, great defending, no contact, no danger to either player. The second scenario is where two players are going for a 50-50 ball in open play. If I get there first, steal the ball, we're back into the same situation we've just seen. If Bill gets there first, same again. If we both get there together, it's just a case of who can get a toe on the ball first. What can't happen is on the way to the ball, there's none of this, because that's contact, the referee, the referee will blow his whistle. See, this situation can be really dangerous, a 50-50 ball in open play. However, listen, when players are fully on board with the non-contact game, it becomes far less dangerous. In this example, the ball bounces around. Look at the body language of the players trying to win the ball. Leading with the foot, trying to win the ball, not the upper body, pushing their opponent. As it bounces free again to these three players, again, note how all of them are trying to lead with their feet, trying to get a toe on it, not blocking or shoulder charging their opponent, none of that nonsense. Player in orange gets a toe on it and nips through. OK, the third scenario is where I receive the ball close to the boards on a five-a-side pitch or the wall in a gym. As I receive the ball and shield, shield it from the defender, the danger is a second defender comes in and I can't shield the ball from both of them. All they're trying to make me do is pass the ball. What can't happen is I get shoulder charged into the boards. That's the danger. This third scenario, you need good eyesight because it's on the far side of the pitch. It's a 2v1 situation up against the wall. As the player in red receives the ball, he's faced with the defender. But as we move it, jock it forward a little bit, a second defender joins in. The forward in red, well, he isn't shielding the ball, so the defender can make a challenge. Defender wins the loose ball, gets his team out of trouble with a cheeky back heel and nice triangle of passes. The same situation develops here, again with the same players involved. This time though, the forward does shield the ball and as the second defender comes in, the forward passes the ball down the line. So there we have it, non-contact walking football. And with thousands of people now playing the game, getting fitter, socialising or just having fun, 
Let's make sure that they can play without fear of being hurt or injured. It's a game of skill, not aggression. Thank <laughs> you.